The story begins as we see a masked man confronted by a swarm of monsters. He takes them out in an instant, but he says it's not enough, and he still wants more. We cut to a man in a carriage, running away from goblins, but luckily for him, a group of warriors appear, and they are able to deal with the goblins. After their victory, they return to the town, passing by a hungry fate, who is standing guard at the castle. He notices them, but is disappointed he can never be like them, because he is constantly hungry because of his useless skill, gluttony. The crowd is amazed as a group of holy knights pass through the town. They are the trio of the Vleric siblings, but we see they are terrible people as one of them kicks away a peasant in their way. They make their way towards the castle, and at the gate, the eldest Raphael gives fate his pay by throwing it on the ground. As he tries to pick it up, Hato steps on his hand, but his stomach growls at that moment, and Raphael calls him disgusting. The siblings get mad at the growling, thinking it makes it seem like they don't pay him enough. They start beating him up, but he is saved by another holy knight named Roxy, who reminds the siblings of their duty as holy knights to be kind to the citizens they have sworn to protect. The siblings decide to leave, and Roxy helps fade up. She consoles him by telling him that guarding the gate is honorable, and they are both equal in their job. Roxy takes over guarding the gate, and asks him to tell her if something like this happens again, but Fate says that he is used to it, and he decides to leave. We learn that Fate wants to protect Roxy by keeping a distance, and he doesn't want to get her involved as he fears that Raphael will hurt her too. Fate is encouraged by the bartender to stand up for himself, or he could end up dead like the last guy. On his way home, Fate curses his gluttony skill for still being hungry even though he had a meal. He wishes he could have been born with a more useful skill, and despairs that he can't do anything else, because he can't change how things are. Fate notices thieves jumping over the castle wall, so he hurries over to Roxy to tell her the situation, and she leaves him to take over her position, as she runs off to find the thieves. As he waits for Roxy to finish beating up the thieves, one of them runs toward him. His instincts tell him to run, but the thought of Roxy trusting him with her position helps him muster the courage to stay. He prepares himself to fight, and notices that the thief is already injured. He gathers his courage, and jumps toward the man, piercing him through his chest, and he suddenly hears a voice telling him that his gluttony skill has been activated, and his stats have been increased. Fate is confused, and the voice further tells him that the skills identify, and telepathy, have been added for him. At the same time, Roxy returns from her fight, and is concerned for him, but he notices something strange because he heard words coming from her, but her mouth didn't move. He reassures her, and tells her that she can take credit for his kill, because it would cause problems for him if Raphael found out, so in return, Roxy offers him a job to work for her family. Fate considers his options, and eventually agrees to work for her family. Later that night, Fate notices that all his stats are in the triple digits, and he then realizes that he must have been using telepathy on Roxy earlier. He is still confused about what is going on, but is now confident he can defeat monsters with his improved stats. The following day, Fate goes out to look for a sword. But when the merchant finds out he is poor, he tells him he can only afford the trash swords in the barrel. He looks through the swords using his new identify skill, and learns that all the swords are useless except one. When Fate examines that sword, he is shocked when it suddenly speaks to him, introducing itself as greed, and telling Fate to buy him. Upon learning that Greed is knowledgeable about gluttony, he ends up deciding to buy it. We see the Vleric siblings talk about Roxy trying to hire Fate without informing them first, but Raphael feels there is no need to complicate things between them and the Hearts family, because they are both part of the five great families that support the kingdom, while noting Fate as being worthless. Raphael heads toward the military district while his sister wonders what he's going to study, so he tells her his plan to learn how to become immortal. Later on, we see Fate walking with greed in his hand, and it warns him of something fast approaching. A goblin appears out of nowhere, but Fate is easily able to kill it, which activates his gluttony skill, increasing his stats once again, and the skill strength boost is given to him. Swarms of goblins appear out of nowhere, but Fate remains calm as he cuts them down. After each kill, his gluttony skill is activated, and he ends up killing hundreds. When it's all over, he checks his stats, and is surprised by how much they have increased. Greed points out that Fate must be full, and Fate notices that his stomach hasn't growled at all that day, which has never happened before. 
Greed says that normally each person has only the skill they are born with, but thanks to gluttony, fate can steal the stats and skills of others, but it's not something that other people can know about. Fate realizes that he must always fight alone, but Greed reassures him, saying he is not alone since he is with him. Fate takes all the goblin ears to get paid, and wonders about all the things he can buy as they enter the town, but is reminded by Greed of his maintenance coming first. At that moment, they suddenly run into a man and a young girl who we see asking for help. Fate uses his skill identify to assess the man's threat level and finds that he has the skill to hide stats. Fate is suspicious, but says that they can't just ignore a girl's cry for help. They follow the man, and he tells the girl that she'll be sold as a slave to the Holy Knights. Greed warns Fate that the man is tough, so it's his last chance to run away, but Fate says he has finally gained the power he always wanted and he will use it to protect the weak. We see an old nun speaking to a bunch of orphans, telling them about Holy Laplace, the creator of the world. She reveals that when Laplace left the world, she gifted people special powers known as skills, telling them about the time when there were no skills, and everything was peaceful. A nun barges into the room, saying she can't find a missing orphan. She leaves to continue her search, and the other nun wonders where the girl named Sahara has gone. We learn that the girl who has been kidnapped is Sahara, and as the kidnapper leaves, fate takes this chance to save her. He rescues the girl, but the kidnapper appears behind him. The kidnapper calls him foolish, telling him that he has no chance of beating him. He wants to take the girl to safety, but is unsure of what to do. Greed advises him to step back, take advantage of the kidnapper's overconfidence, and wait for the right moment to attack. He tries to flee with Sahara, but they eventually reach a dead end. Fate launches a surprise attack, and as the man prepares to use his skill, Greed instructs Fate to strike him head on. Fate charges at the man, delivering a decisive blow. Fate orders the man to tell him everything, but he refuses, so Fate proceeds to torture him, and he eventually tells Fate that he was ordered by Hato to kidnap Sahara. Fate takes Sahara to get some food after hearing her stomach growl, and he takes her back to the orphanage. He is surprised to hear Sahara's gratitude because it's the first time someone thanked him. He approaches Sahara and gives her advice. The same words his father had told him in the past, but he had been unable to understand them up until now. No matter how hard things get, if you can laugh them off, one day you will find happiness. On the way back, Greed congratulates Fate on learning his first technical skill, the one-handed sword technique. A secret technique that allows him to attack twice in a single strike. Fate thinks he got lucky against the kidnapper, and he is determined to get stronger, so that he can win without relying on luck. The following day, Fate arrives at the Hart family estate, where Roxy greets him at the gate, and he is taken aback by her appearance. She takes him to the grave of her recently deceased father, revealing that he was killed five days ago in Galia. Galia is a continent dominated by monsters, and it's the duty of holy knights to keep them in check. Roxy explains that this duty fell to the Hart family this year, but unfortunately, a divine dragon came out of a 1,000-year solitude, wiping out the group led by her father. She tells him that she is currently the head of the house, and she is looking forward to working with him. As they are about to shake hands, Fate remembers that his telepathy will be activated, so he points towards a random person. We meet the chief maid Haru, who reminds Fate to conduct himself as a servant of the Hart family. A week goes by, as Fate continues to work in the Heart Estate. He's talking with the other servants, when his stomach starts to growl, shocking the other servants, because they just ate lunch. He is called to meet Roxy, but his stomach continues to growl, and even Fate is confused by what is happening. Roxy tries to have a conversation with him, but he keeps thinking about why he's so hungry. Roxy snaps him out of it, and the two relate over their dead fathers, because they were both killed by monsters. She considers him as a member of the family, causing him to become flustered, but he suddenly loses consciousness. He wakes up in his room, where he sees a note from Roxy, telling him to take the day off. Fate questions Greed about his hunger, and Greed reveals that it is due to gluttony. The more souls Fate consumes, the stronger he'll become, but at the same time, his desire will also grow stronger, and he is destined to seek out souls to consume, until the day that he dies. Greed tells Fate that when his hunger is at its limit, it will show in his eyes, and he realizes that his eyes are red. Fate goes outside, and walks by a group of people, thinking they smell delicious, 
as Greed explains that his hunger boost has kicked in because his hunger is at its limit. Greed explains that it's a temporary power that helps him hunt prey, and the prey can be tracked by scent, saying weaker prey will be paralyzed by fear. We see them go outside the kingdom and find several goblins terrified. Fate massacres all of them and heads towards the hobgoblin forest. He continues to kill for several hours until his hunger is finally satisfied, but a goblin king appears out of nowhere and he uses his identify skill. We see that they're both almost equal in terms of stats, but the goblin king has a health regeneration skill. Fate goes after the goblin king and is disgusted to see the goblin devour a human. He launches a surprise attack, slicing off its arm, and the fight goes on, but all he can do is dodge its attacks. Greed tells him to attack, so he charges in, managing to overpower it, and he lands the finishing blow. Fate's stats increase significantly, and he gains the health regeneration skill. Greed reveals that with Fate's current stats, he can unlock Greed's first level in exchange for his stats. Greed explains that the first level will give him new functions, but Fate is shocked to learn that he needs to hand over all the stats he gained since they met. Greed reveals that Fate will lose the right to wield him if he doesn't unlock him, so Fate agrees to do it. He begins the process, and Fate can feel his power leaving his body as Greed transforms into a magic bow. He tells Fate that there is a goblin watching them, and he teaches Fate how to use the bow, which creates magic arrows when the string is pulled, telling him that he can aim wherever he wants, but the arrow will always hit its target. Fate takes the Goblin King's ears, and he leaves it at the orphanage door, as he believes that they need it more. The next day, Fate stops an intruder, but turns out it's Roxy dressed up as a peasant, trying to secretly go to town for inspection. She brings Fate along with her, and on the way to town, she asks Fate to show her his sword, but he's afraid that she might figure something out after she sees it. The sword slips from his hand, and Roxy catches it, but fortunately doesn't notice anything. She tells Fate that the sword needs some maintenance, saying she will take him to the Hart family's blacksmith. They finally reach the town, and are standing at a stall, when everyone tenses up as a holy knight approaches. Fate's stomach growls at the worst possible time, angering the holy knight. The knight tries to step on him, but Roxy stops him, catching everyone's attention. Everyone is looking at Roxy, trying to figure out if the peasant girl is actually Miss Roxy. Greed tells Fate that if they act as a couple, no one will think that the peasant girl is actually Roxy. Roxy overhears this plan when Fate replies to Greed, thinking it's a good idea, so she goes along with it, and they start acting like a couple, convincing everyone that the girl is not Roxy. While everyone is distracted, they both slip away, and they hide in the corner. Fate hears her thoughts, as she thinks about how her heart is racing, because this is the first time she has locked arms with a boy. Roxy decides that they need to keep moving, and they overhear people talking about all the dead goblins that were recently found. The rumors are that it was done by a wandering monster, but it doesn't explain why the goblin ears were donated to the orphanage in the slums. She asks Fate to take her where the warriors gather, saying she wants to investigate the wandering monster. Fate takes Roxy to the bar, where the bartender reveals that he has heard about a warrior who struck gold when he found a mountain of goblin corpses with their ears still intact. Roxy believes that it must have been a monster from a different region, and the bartender thinks this is bad for business, because a lot of merchants travel through those goblin plains, so people won't travel because they fear that a monster might attack them. An old man enters the bar, and he joins the conversation, telling them the monster is a lich, which is why the holy knights are directly dealing with him. A group of warriors enter the bar and tell Roxy to join them for fun. Roxy pushes the man lightly, but he is sent crashing to the other side of the room, and they realize that only a holy knight can have that much power. Roxy finally reveals her identity, and the warriors apologize, trying to give her all the money they have. But she rejects it, telling them not to fear the holy knights, as she reveals that she dreams of a world where commoners and holy knights can laugh together. They go to the blacksmith, who finishes maintenance on Greed, so he now looks like a new sword. While going through town, Roxy explains that she didn't know about the hunt, because it's being led by the Vleric family, and they simply didn't tell her. We see Hato holding a child, explaining that he is simply taking a lost child into protection, but fate takes the boy away, and Roxy tells them that they will take care of him. Roxy asks Raphael why she was not informed about the hunt, and he says that he didn't want to bother her, as she must have been busy mourning her father, 
the Vlerics decide to leave, while Fate and Roxy take the boy to find his mother, allowing him to reunite with her. After returning home, Fate asks Greed for a way to hunt monsters without Roxy finding out, and the next day, Greed tells him to buy a mask with perception warping magic, which will make him look different to whoever sees him. We see that Raphael has gathered the knights in a dark room, and they discuss the excursion to Galia. Sometime later, a group of warriors find more dead goblins, and they look up to find a lich standing on a mountain of corpses. The terrified warriors call it a corpse, and they run away, as we see Fate enjoy the nickname given to him. The next day, Roxy goes up to Fate, and tells him to go with her, because she has a secret mission for him. They both get in a carriage, and pass through the Hart family's vineyard to arrive at their destination, where Roxy's mother Aisha, is standing at the door. Roxy introduces Fate as a servant she recently hired, and Aisha asks Fate if he likes Roxy, causing them to become flustered. But Aisha explains that she wants to know his opinion of Roxy as a boss, and Fate says that he would like to serve her until the end of his life, causing Roxy to be stunned. We see Fate helping the other servants harvest the grapes, and they tell him how the lords have personally helped cultivate this land for generations, and everyone is proud that they can help the lords. A servant reveals that it's time for hunting as well, because monsters called Cobalt appear during the harvest season, looking for food. Fate's stomach starts growling, as Greed explains that gluttony requires various kinds of souls, and goblins alone won't satisfy his growing hunger. On his way home, Fate sees a mysterious girl with a massive axe. As she passes by, Fate is shocked to see she has the same eyes as him. He tries to check her stats, but it doesn't work. The girl checks him out, and mentions she is too early. Fate wonders what she's talking about, but she just tells him that he can have the kobolds, and declares that he now owes her, telling him that they will meet again. Roxy catches up, and she points out that the girl is a galleon. We learn that Galia was a great military power for a thousand years ago, but with the rise in monsters, their nation eventually collapsed, and most of their people were killed, so she is surprised to see a survivor. As the two head back, Fate wonders if Roxy will really be okay hunting the monsters on her own, but she assures him that the other warriors will be with her, and it's her duty as a holy knight. The next day, we see everyone hiding as they prepare to hunt the kobolds, but they're all shocked when a massive monster suddenly appears. Fate's mouth waters seeing it, but Greed knows this is a problem, because Fate is almost in a starvation state, and Fate worries about Roxy seeing him. He checks the monster's stats, and we see it's at level 50 with insanely high stats. It's known as a crowned beast, and Greed explains that it's a monster born from accumulated aggression. They return to the village, and everyone panics because they don't think that they stand a chance, but Roxy manages to calm them down, assuring them that she will slay it, and she tells the warriors they will go back the next day. Greed notes that they don't stand a chance, and Fate refuses to let Roxy die, so he heads back by himself later that night. He sees there are kobolds around the crowned beast, and Greed wonders what he plans to do. He starts attacking with his bow form, taking some of them out, as he absorbs their stats with his gluttony. He tries shooting at the crowned beast, but it just blocks it using one of the soldiers. Fate gets closer with his sword, taking out even more of the kobolds. We see his stats have significantly increased, and he thinks he can now take out the boss with his bow, but the beast is able to catch his arrow. He prepares to fight it with his sword, but the beast suddenly uses a skill that blasts him with a shock wave. Fate is knocked out, and a kobold comes to finish him off. However, it suddenly gets cut, and we see Fate was just pretending to be unconscious. Fate takes out another kobold, absorbing its stats, and Greed notes that he should be able to use his first level hidden art. It will cost 10% of his current stats, but it should allow him to defeat the boss. Fate accepts the conditions, and his bow gets an upgrade. He fires a powerful shot at the beast, wiping it out in a single hit, and Fate thinks it might have been overkill. His gluttony skill is activated, but it causes him tremendous pain. He wonders what's going on, and Greed tells him it's because it's the first time he has devoured a soul of higher quality, but Greed tells him he must bear the pain no matter what, or else he will lose control, and it will be even worse than his starvation state. Fate tries to hold it in, but the pain is unbearable, and he screams in agony. The next day, the warriors arrive at the aftermath of the massacre, and wonder if it was done by magic arrows. Roxy is also there, and she wonders who could be strong enough to do this much damage. A few moments later, 
We see that fate is fine, as Roxy goes on to tell Aisha about what she saw. She remembers the mysterious girl they saw the other day, and thinks that she must have been the one that killed all those monsters. Roxy tells Fate that she is ready to return to the capital, and Aisha notices how happy Roxy looks when she is talking to him. After some time, Aisha speaks to him, telling him to always support Roxy and take care of her. She tells him that he doesn't need to hold prestige or authority, because what matters is his desire to help Roxy. She doesn't have much time left, so she asks Fate to take care of Roxy in her place, and to think about it carefully. On the way home, he thinks about what Aisha said, and believes that he is not worthy of the task, as he is hiding such an important thing from Roxy. That evening, Fate is shocked to see that his eyes are still red, even though he has slaughtered a bunch of goblins. Greed explains that the goblins won't be able to satisfy his hunger anymore, and he must find stronger souls before he loses control. Sometime later, Fate is sitting in a bar, and decides that he is not worthy of standing by Roxy, because he is hiding things from her. The old man walks in, and complains about how Hato is joining the lich hunt. He clearly hates Hato, and wishes that he is sent on the Galia expedition, so that he can end up as monster food. This shocks Fate, because he can't believe that they're planning another expedition so soon, considering that Roxy's father just passed away, and we see that Roxy has been chosen as Hato's replacement. A few moments later, we see Roxy at her father's grave, telling him that she has been chosen for the Galia expedition. Fate arrives, imploring her not to go, but Roxy tells him that she has already decided that she will go. Meanwhile, we see that the Vlerics are celebrating, because they will soon be able to get rid of Roxy. The two other siblings leave the rest to Hato, as they are about to leave for a place called Tenburn. Hato asks Raphael to tell him the secret involving immortality, but Raphael just tells him that he must successfully deal with the Lich. We see Fate standing in the middle of the plains, thinking about how he can't interfere with official matters, but he decides that he can't let the Holy Knights continue to treat people like trash. Hato arrives with his men, and orders them to attack Fate, but he easily deals with them, as Hato watches on in horror. The others run away in fear, and Hato prepares to take him on, saying he won't let corpse make a fool of him. Fate removes his mask, revealing his identity, and Hato wonders how a nobody like him can be so powerful. Hato takes pride in his status as a holy knight, but Fate challenges him to display his powers. Fate asks Greed if he can shatter a holy sword, and Greed says that it shouldn't be a problem, telling Fate to swing as hard as he can. Hato tries to attack with holy light, but Fate suddenly appears behind him. He takes a swing, but Fate destroys the holy sword, and he challenges Hato to take the broken half. Hato tries to step back, but he falls to the ground, and Fate picks him up saying he needs to be taught a lesson. Fate smashes him against the trees, destroying multiple trees, and he starts begging for his life. But Fate throws him high into the air, and he equips the upgraded bow, firing a powerful arrow towards Hato, and leaving a hole in the clouds. Hato falls to the ground, and he wonders why Fate didn't kill him. Fate says that he still has questions for him, and Hato thinks that this is about Roxy, so he reveals that she volunteered for the Galia expedition herself begging Fate to spare him, as he promises to cancel the expedition. Fate explains that this isn't for Roxy, but for his own revenge, and he delivers the finishing blow. The gluttony skill activates again, giving Fate the holy sword technique, which is required for a person to become a holy knight. Greed tells Fate that he can now be considered as a holy knight, but he knows that no one in the capital would accept that, saying he doesn't want to be one anyway. Greed tells him that he can now unlock the second level, in exchange for all of his stats. Fate agrees to do it, and Greed proceeds with the upgrade, revealing the new form, which is a scythe that can cut through anything. The next day, Roxy is about to leave for the expedition, and everyone is there to see her off. They are all sad, but Roxy consoles them, saying three years isn't a long time, and she makes her way to Fate, and they bid each other farewell. Haru gives Fate the recommendation letter left by Roxy, so that he can seek employment at a lord's manor. But Fate rejects the letter, telling Haru that he will be living as a warrior from now on. That night, we learn that Fate actually plans to go to Galia to support Roxy. As Fate is leaving the capital, we see a girl watching him, saying things are shaping up nicely. Sometime later, Roxy gives a speech to all the troops in the expedition, telling everyone that they must do their best to destroy the Divine Dragon, 
which has woken up from its slumber. Roxy is glad to see that a girl named Mia and a man named Mugen will be joining her. Mia calls Mugen an oddball for wanting to test his strength against a divine dragon, but Mugen explains that he volunteered because of Roxy's father and wants to avenge him. Roxy asks him if his family is against him going to Galia, but he says that his daughter couldn't care less and only wants him to bring back Galleon relics. We see that Mugen's daughter Rain is working as a researcher in a lab filled with the goblins that Fate killed. She discovers that some of the wounds were from the magic arrows of the Black Sword, one of the weapons of mortal sin. We learn that the weapons of mortal sin are made of a special material, which can manipulate magic power at a high level, and Rain thinks that they can expand the possibility spectrum for skills, saying she wants to see one of these weapons. Fate arrives at the merchant city of Tetra, and he reveals that he's been there before. He discovers that the carriage for Galia will not be leaving till the next day, so Fate decides to gather intel for now. At the bar, he sees a man asking a group of warriors for their help, but they tell him that the money he is offering is not enough, and they start bullying him. Fate beats them up, forcing them to leave, and he greets the man, who turns out to be his old friend named Set. In a flashback, we learn that when Fate was younger, he was bullied because his stomach was always growling and he had a good relationship with his father before he was eventually killed by the monsters. Fate's father was a warrior with the spear technique and this is why the village chief kept him around. After his death, no one was willing to take care of Fate and he was driven out of the village upon the village chief's command. Back in the present, Set begs Fate to help him but Fate doesn't seem to care because Set is the son of the village chief. He agrees to help only because Gluttony needs to be fed, and the monsters attacking the village would be perfect for him. They arrive at the village, but the village chief is disappointed, because Set brought back the once exiled weakling. Set tries to vouch for Fate's strength after having seen him defeat the other warriors, but the chief doesn't believe any of it. The villagers reveal that screams were heard from a nearby forest, thinking the monsters are getting close, and the chief suggests sacrificing Fate to buy them some time. At Set's house, Set tells Fate about his wife being killed by the monsters, and that he regrets growing up thinking that his father was always correct, explaining how he finally got his act together when his daughter was born. He informs Fate that the monsters first showed up around a month ago, and according to the eyewitnesses, the monsters can fly. The villagers have never seen anything like it before, so they decided to hire warriors to deal with them. Fate's stomach starts growling, so Set prepares to get him some food. Greed tells Fate that the monsters they are dealing with are gargoyles, who start by doing probing attacks to see how the humans react, and when the time is right, the entire pack attacks in a swarm. Set's daughter gives Fate a candy, which he eats, but he suddenly collapses. Set and his daughter wonder what just happened, and Set's daughter reveals that he just ate the candy that Grandpa had given her. Greed thinks that the candy was poisoned, and that the village chief was serious about using Fate as a sacrifice. Set tries to wake him up, but to no avail, and he realizes that the gargoyles are approaching the village. The gargoyles attack, setting the village on fire, and eating the villagers. Fate is still unconscious because of the poison, so Set creates an antidote, and he gives it to Fate, allowing him to recover. He realizes that they're under attack, so he rushes outside, and he sees the village in ruins. He checks the gargoyles stats, and we learn that it has a skill which allows it to launch fireballs. Greed transforms into a scythe, as the gargoyles combine their powers, allowing them to launch a massive fireball. But Fate throws his weapon, slicing through the fireball, and it pursues the gargoyles, wiping them out. The scythe returns to Fate, and he acquires the fireball skill, as the leader of the pack appears before him. He checks its stats, and we learn that it has the fireball skill, as well as the ability to resist fire. Greed thinks that it will try to launch fireballs at a close range, so as the gargoyle charges at fate, preparing to attack, he delivers a devastating blow, slicing it in half, and killing it instantly. The next day, we learn that the village has been completely destroyed. Fate uses his identify skill, revealing that the soil isn't healthy, so crops won't grow in that area. Set wonders why fate chose to be a warrior, because he can earn a living with his identify skill, but he tells Set that he has no choice but to fight. Set tells Fate to hit him, because he feels guilty for what he did, so Fate tries to punch him lightly, but he gets knocked down, as Fate realizes that he has become too strong. He tells Set to look after his daughter, and they bid each other farewell. 
we see fate riding a carriage, as a man tells him to stay alert, because he is being paid to protect the carriage. A group of bandits block their path, causing the man to panic, as he begs fate to protect him. The bandits prepare to attack, but they are suddenly blown away, as the mysterious girl appears, telling fate that he owes her for the kobolds. The man allows her to ride the carriage, but as she enters it, the carriage tips over. She tells her weapon sloth to return to normal, and this fixes the problem, as fate realizes that she can change the weight of her weapon. While in the carriage, the girl reveals that she knows about fate's skill, because she isn't so different, revealing that she also has a skill of deadly sin. She introduces herself as Mine of Wrath, and her stomach starts growling, so he gives her food, but she eats all of it, leaving nothing for him to eat. They arrive at the town of Lanchester, where we see a girl entering the gate, but she is greeted by ghosts, so she screams for help. A man named Rudolph arrives, defeating the ghosts and introducing himself as the Lord of Lanchester, grabbing the girl's attention. Fate learns that the expedition led by Roxy will be arriving in the town, and he is about to be paid for his services, but Mine takes it, saying she defeated the bandits. She suddenly falls asleep, so Fate carries her around the town, as he notices that everyone has symbols on their necks. Greed thinks that the symbols represent the social classes, thinking the people must really love Rudolph, because they allowed him to place symbols on their necks. But we see him executing his men, because they have failed in their duty to convey his family's greatness, and we learn that the people are obeying him, because they don't want to die by his hands. Fate arrives at a hotel, where Greed reveals that he knows mine, and that sloth is also a weapon of mortal sin. He reveals that the skills of deadly sin were born by defying the divine laws, and that gluttony has the potential to overturn the divine system of leveling because of its ability to consume souls. Fate notes that he can't satiate his hunger, seeing it as punishment for consuming souls, and he wonders why he was given the skill of gluttony, revealing that he hates it because he has to keep killing just to survive. Greed warns him not to let his emotions disturb him because gluttony could take over if his mind is weak revealing that the trick to controlling his hunger is to sustain a state of near starvation. While going on a hunt, Greed advises fate not to satisfy gluttony at once and slowly get his fill. A sandman appears, so fate uses his bow and he casts fireball on the arrow before launching it at the sandman, killing it instantly. Meanwhile, Mine wakes up and she grabs something to eat. She learns about a creature known as the Sand Golem which is threatening the people in the town, and it has a bounty of 100 gold. Fate continues to hunt Sandman, and he feels the presence of a powerful monster, realizing that it's time for the main dish. We see a group of warriors struggling against the Sand Golem, when Fate joins the battle, saying he will take care of the monster. He checks the monster's stats, and we learn that it has the ability to create sandstorms. He launches a fire arrow, and he charges in, but the monster manages to push him back. It uses its skill, creating a sandstorm, but Fate transforms his weapon into a scythe, using it to launch an attack, which overpowers the sandstorm, destroying the monster's body. The monster's core tries to escape, hiding in the sand, but Fate uses his bow, launching a powerful arrow, which chases the core, destroying it in an enormous explosion. The next day, Fate receives 100 gold for defeating the sand golem, but Rudolph suddenly appears, telling fate to serve him, as he explains that fate has no right to refuse, because his decision is final. Mine tells him that fate belongs to her, but he calls her a child, so she hits him, blowing him away. Fate knows that they're in trouble, so he tells Mine that they should leave the town. They ride the carriage, as fate wonders why Mine eats a lot, and she reveals that anger burns plenty of calories. He tells her that despite her appetite, she isn't growing at all, causing her to become upset so she activates Sloth, but she ends up breaking the carriage. As the owner fixes it, Fate enters a village, and Greed notes that there are plenty of monsters in the area, so he thinks that someone is protecting the village. He encounters the village chief named Aaron, who is revealed to be a holy knight. He knows that Fate wants to stay in the village, and he challenges Fate to a duel. Fate tries to check his stats, but he recognizes the Identify skill, revealing that he can also use that skill. They exchange blows, and Aaron manages to defeat Fate, but he decides to let him stay, under the condition that they train together. He knows that Fate isn't used to his powers, so he will benefit from their training. He ends up accepting the condition, and Mine appears, grabbing Aaron's attention, because he can already tell that she's a skilled warrior. 
He allows them to stay in the village, and we see him with fate, training him how to fight hand to hand. He struggles to hit Eren, but he enters half starvation mode, improving his speed, and allowing him to keep up with Eren's moves. That evening, we see Eren staring at a nearby castle, as Fate sees a photo of Eren's family. Greed thinks that Eren's son looks like Fate, thinking his family has something to do with why he became the village chief. The next day, Eren tells Fate to protect himself with a twig, and Eren charges at him. But he predicts the sword's movement, and he lets the twig slide along the blade, allowing him to deflect the blow. Eren is impressed, saying Fate has improved, and that evening, Fate tells Eren that they will be leaving the next day, thanking him for his hospitality. He observes that Mayan is too busy eating, and she reveals that she can't taste her food, as Greed mentions that this is the punishment for wrath. Eren stares at the castle, and he reveals that it once belonged to him. We learn that while he was away from the castle, it was attacked by monsters, so his son Rook tried his best to defend, but he ended up dying. The Lich Lord took over the castle, and Eren knows that his family is still trapped there. Fate thinks about going there, and Eren decides to join him, while Mine agrees to protect the village if they pay her 50 gold. They make their way to the castle, where Fate shoots a skeleton, turning it into stone, as he reveals that he used Sandstorm with his arrow to petrify the target. They head deeper into the castle, destroying the skeletons along the way, and they enter a room, where Eren is surprised to see his family. They tell him that they've been waiting for him, and he thinks that they're still alive. But Greed reveals that they're already dead, and the Lich is using illusion magic to make them look alive. Rook suddenly attacks Eren, but he manages to block it, pushing Rook back. Rook says that he despises Eren, because he abandoned his family to work in the capital, and Rook blames him for what happened to them. Fate thinks about using his scythe to dispel the illusion, but Greed reveals that if they do this, Fate will end up consuming the souls of Eren's family, sending them to an eternal hell. Eren says that he will take care of his family, and Fate decides to look for the Lich. He eventually finds it, realizing that its stats are ridiculously high. He manages to break its arms, but it summons a group of zombies, who are begging Fate to save them, but he knows that he can't attack them. Eren joins the fight, taking down the zombies, and he sees his wife, recalling the last moment he spent with his family. We learn that they didn't want him to go, but he promised to return after his mission. He blames himself for what happened to them, because they wouldn't have died if he had returned sooner. But he is determined to put their souls to rest, and he uses the Grand Cross skill, releasing a flash of holy light, but it isn't strong enough to defeat the Lich. Fate sees Rook's sword, and he decides to use it, combining his powers with Eren. They use the Grand Cross skill, creating a massive flash of light, which instantly kills the Lich, freeing the souls in the castle. Eren's family appears before him, and they tell him not to blame himself for what happened, telling him that he was able to save them in the end. He asks for forgiveness, saying they are more important than his duties, but they tell him that he should continue to serve the people. He promises to make them proud, and he gives Rook a souvenir, before they finally rest in peace. The souls in the castle disappear, but the Lich's core tries to ruin the moment, so fate destroys it, allowing him to consume the Lich. Later that evening, we learn that Eren has broken his level limit, thinking it's because he was fighting with fate. Greed reveals that Eren was able to do this, because he opened his heart to fate, who has a skill of deadly sin. They return to the village, where Eren pays mine for her services. She mentions that she needs money to rebuild her village, saying money doesn't lie, and fate will understand what she means after he grows older. Eren reveals that he saw her 50 years ago, and that she was already a perfect warrior, but her appearance hasn't changed at all. She tells him that he might be able to reach her level after he trains for a thousand years, but she knows that he won't be able to live that long, because he's only human, saying she is a ghost who isn't allowed to die. Eren observes that Fate's eyes have returned to normal, and he mentions that he needs to keep killing monsters, so that his eyes won't turn red. Eren seems to know about gluttony, telling him to return to the village after his quest, because there is something he needs to know. Meanwhile, the Vleric family acquires an artifact known as the Philosopher's Stone, which has the power to cure anything, and Raphael's sister thinks that they are closer to achieving immortality. A servant delivers a report, telling them that Hato was killed by Corpse. The servant mentions that Corpse isn't a monster, but a warrior, and Raphael wonders who he is, wanting to avenge his fallen brother. Fate and Mine continue on together, 
and Fate comments on her constant eating once again, but she shares some with him, and she takes a nap on his lap. He tries asking Greed about her, but he still refuses to tell him anything, saying he will need to find out for himself. Meanwhile, Roxy's group arrives at Aaron's castle, and they are amazed that the lich occupying the castle was defeated. Aaron greets them, and Mugen pays his respects. Roxy is about to introduce herself, but Aaron reveals he knew her parents, and he was the one that actually named her. They ask him about how he defeated the lich, and he admits that he had some help. Roxy asks for their name, but we see Fate asked Aaron to keep his identity a secret, so he says he's unable to tell her. Aaron can tell they are headed for Galia, so he offers to give Roxy some training as her godfather. Fate and Mine arrive at a ruin, wondering where they are, and Mine reveals this is where she was born. They come across a huge cocoon, and Greed notes that it's a chimera, a weapon which was created in Galia long ago, by patching different monsters together. Fate checks its stats, and we see they are absolutely insane, but Mine thinks they have a chance since it's still an infant. She tells him it's time for him to return the favor, revealing that it can't die as long as its soul is intact, and Fate realizes she wants him to use his gluttoning skill to eat its soul. Mine launches an attack on the cocoon, revealing the chimera, but we see there's a girl at its core. Fate doesn't want to eat her soul, but Mine tells him it's just a monster using a human skin. The chimera launches an attack, creating a wave of lava, but Mine manages to stop it. She cuts off one of the chimera's arms, and Fate shoots it with his petrifying arrows, but it seems to have no effect, and the chimera's arm also regenerates. Fate wonders what they should do, and Mine continues her attack. Fate notices she's even stronger than before, and Greed notes that the more she swings Sloth around, the stronger and heavier it gets, but it becomes harder to control. However, it's not enough, and the creature starts to evolve. Mine tells Fate to get back, but this reminds him of Roxy, and he thinks he's being saved once again. He refuses to just sit back, and he decides to use his half-starvation mode. Mine warns him it's dangerous, but he continues to use the power. He sacrifices 10% of his stats to shoot an upgraded petrification shot, and Mine activates Sloth, knocking down the Chimera, but it suddenly uses a barrier skill to protect itself, and Fate switches to his Scythe to cut through. The barrier pushes him back, but Greed tells him to aim for the flow of mana. He manages to shatter the barrier, and the girl cries in pain. The Chimera starts to fly away, and it seems Fate is reaching his limit. Mine tells him to get on her axe, and she launches him up into the sky. Greed tells him he can now use the second stage of his ultimate at the cost of 20% of his stats, and Fate agrees, upgrading his scythe. But as he gets closer to it, the Chimera traps him in its barrier, preparing to burn them both up, but Fate delivers the finishing blow, stabbing the girl, but this triggers his telepathy skill. We see the girl's past, and it seems like she knew mine. Fate's gluttony skill activates, but he just feels her loneliness, instead of his usual excitement, and Greed says it's because she was one of his kin. We see Mine at the girl's grave, and Fate asks her how she knew the girl. Mine says it was a long time ago, but she knows that she must take them out once they become a chimera, or else they will just cause more suffering for others. Fate thinks it could happen to him, so he asks Mine to kill him if he's ever no longer himself. Mine hugs him, but she agrees with his request. Fate prepares to head for Babylon, but Mine intends to rebuild her village. She gets the feeling he'll be dead before they meet again, and we learn Fate unlocked Greed's new form which is a magic shield. She calls him dumb for resetting his stats in such a place, and Fate begs her to help him hunt so he can regain his stats. They end up splitting up, and Fate makes it to the city of Babylon, the fortress that separates the kingdom from Galia. Fate looks for the gate, and Greed tells him he's going the wrong way, revealing he once visited with his previous wielder. Fate asks about them, and we learn they also had a deadly sin skill, but they didn't survive for very long. When they get inside the city, Fate can't believe how expensive things are compared to the capital, but there's suddenly an announcement that the new lord has arrived, and the people are excited to see Roxy, but Fate suddenly notices a strange presence, and it seems they're after Roxy's life. We learn that there are criminals gathering at the city of Babylon, because their crimes would be forgiven if they prove their strength. Fate thinks that the soldiers need all the help they can get, so he believes that this is the perfect place for him. 
we cut to Roxy, as she meets the Holy Knight Alistair, who is the officer in charge of Babylon. He reveals he was there when her father was killed, saying he feels guilty for failing to protect him. But she tells him not to worry, saying she is going to help him fight the monsters, and they agree to work together. Meanwhile, Fate notices a scabbard, and Greed tells him to buy it. He meets the shopkeeper Jade, and he inquires about the item. But Jade tells him that it's only there for display, saying he can create one for Fate's sword. Fate shows him greed, and he thinks that the sword is amazing, saying he can create a scabbard for 500 gold. But Fate can't afford it, so he decides to leave, and he complains about how everything is so expensive in the city. A band of warriors call out to him, and they are about to invite him to join their party, but they think that he looks weak, so they decide not to work with him. While going on a hunt, Fate notices something in the air, as Greed explains that the spores in the area are toxic, advising him not to inhale it. He encounters a group of orcs, so he prepares to take them on, but the warriors suddenly arrive, and they start killing the monsters. But he sees another group approaching, thinking they are planning to surround the warriors, so he charges in, as they fire arrows at him. But he uses Greed's new magic shield form, destroying the arrows, as Greed claims he can withstand any attack in this form. He advises Fate to rush the orcs, so he dashes forward, blocking their attacks, as he rams his shield into them, taking them all out in an instant. After the fight, he wonders why his gluttony skill didn't act up, because he usually struggles after consuming plenty of souls, thinking it must be because of his training with Eren. He goes to the exchange, planning to sell his loot, but the warriors accuse him of stealing, saying the goods belong to them. He tells them to back off, but they continue to pester him, threatening to kill him, so he beats them up. He receives 100 gold for his loot, and at that moment, Roxy enters the room, asking him if he's responsible for the mess. But he explains that he acted in self-defense, and she feels responsible for being unable to maintain the order in the city, so she decides not to punish him. But she tells the warriors that they are going to spend the night in prison, saying they should reflect on their actions. Mia tells Fate to remove his mask, but Roxy tells him that it won't be necessary, as she inquires about his identity. He tells her that his name is Corpse, and she finds him strange, advising him to take care of his appearance, because he looks like a mess. We see him walking around the city, and he is glad that Roxy wasn't able to recognize him, but he thinks about his appearance, thinking he can't afford to clean himself up. But at that moment, Jade approaches him, revealing that he has just opened his shop, and he tells Fate that he has an offer for him. He takes Fate to his shop, saying he knows what happened in the exchange, so he sees potential in Fate, asking him if he can wear a suit of armor for advertising. He agrees to work with Jade, so he gives Fate a suit of armor, saying he can have it for 80 gold. He is surprised that Jade is charging him for this, because he thought that it's free, but after seeing his reaction, Jade agrees to give him a discount. While walking around the city, Fate notices a group of people gathering at a tavern, so he decides to check it out, but he gets a strange feeling as he sees a girl. The girl approaches him, telling him that she's been waiting for him, and she already knows who he is, introducing herself as Eris, the Sin of Lust. They spend time together, as Fate notes that he's getting a strange feeling whenever he looks at her. She explains that this is a side effect of her lust skill, revealing that people fall in love whenever they look at her. She reveals that she has been watching him for a long time, knowing he defeated the Chimera, but she tells him that there are more Chimeras in Galia, and she thinks that the Holy Knights aren't strong enough to defeat them. She tells him the reason why she's been waiting for him, revealing that she is a guardian of the kingdom, and she is working towards a better future. She says that Roxy's death would benefit the kingdom, telling him that she needs to die in Galia, but he becomes upset, wondering if she plans to kill her. Eris explains the phenomenon of aggression, saying a monster's hatred lingers after it dies, and it accumulates over the years, until a crowned beast is born. She tells him that this can also occur for humans, explaining that the people hate the Holy Knights, and Roxy is the only one they love. So her death would accumulate more aggression, and this would give birth to a powerful human, who will serve the kingdom in the future. But fate doesn't want her to die, so he becomes furious, and he decides to leave. However, Eris notes that the plan is already in motion, and nothing can stop it. We see Roxy fighting the orcs, and they appear to be winning, but we see Alistair staring at Roxy, and it looks like he's up to something. 
Alistair reports that they have lost contact with the material gathering squad at the Great Canyon in Galia. Roxy worries for them, so she immediately orders a rescue mission. Meanwhile, Jade tells Fate about the Duskstone material needed for his scabbard, but notes that he's run out of it. Greed suggests finding the Duskstone themselves, and we learn that it can only be found in Galia. Jade marks a map for them, and they prepare to head off. Along their way, they come across more orcs, but Fate easily runs through them with his shield. We see Roxy's group heading to the Great Canyon, but they seem to have trouble navigating, because compasses don't work in Galia. However, Roxy notes that they can approximate their location by the concentration of orcs, because there's an orc colony near the canyon, so the more orcs there are, the closer they should be. Fate rests for the night, but he finds himself in a strange dream. He sees the girl from the Chimera, and she tries to tell him something, but he isn't able to hear what she's saying. Everything suddenly turns red, and his fallen foes emerge, dragging him down into the water. He wakes up from the dream, wondering what it meant, but he detects monsters approaching. Using his night vision skill, he sees four salamanders closing in. He shoots one of them with his petrification arrows, but notes that they are behaving strangely, because they would usually run after receiving such an attack, so Greed thinks they are being controlled. The salamanders arrive at Roxy's camp, and they surround them on all sides. The salamanders breathe fire, causing chaos, but Mia tries to fight back with her magic sword. However, it has no effect, and she is blown away. The salamander prepares to bite them, but Fate arrives just in time. He manages to take out the salamanders, and Roxy thanks him for saving them. Fate points out the markings on the salamander's heads, and the others find it strange that four crowned beasts would be working together, and they seem to be targeting Roxy. They manage to make it to the Great Canyon, and they end up going their separate ways. Fate continues to explore, and he finds monsters that have been petrified. He sees Eris up ahead, wondering what she's doing there, but he loses track of her. He suddenly notices a chimera, but it doesn't move, and Greed notes that it doesn't have a core. However, there are two other holes in the wall, so it seems there are two other chimeras. The ground suddenly shakes, and there's an explosion over in Roxy's direction, so Fate rushes to find them. We see Roxy's group being attacked by the two chimeras, and Mugen gets hurt trying to protect Mia. Fate arrives to save them, shooting at the chimeras, and Greed notes that their regeneration is slower than the other chimera they fought. Fate tells Roxy about the chimera's weakness, telling her to aim for their core. They charge in together, and the chimera creates fire around them, but Fate has resistance against it. The chimera tries to protect its core, but Fate cuts its legs, creating an opening, and Roxy delivers the finishing blow. There's one more left, but it suddenly jumps up into the sky. They prepare to attack it as it lands, but it ends up causing the ground to split. Fate and Roxy fall through, but Fate grabs onto Roxy to protect her with his body. When Fate wakes up, he sees how far they fell, and he starts to panic when he notices his mask is gone. Roxy wakes up, but he manages to find his mask. He uses his fire magic to light up the area, and he asks if she managed to find her lost squad, but she tells him she couldn't save them. She asks how he knows so much about the chimeras, and he tells her that a galleon told him about them. Roxy deduces that it was mine, and mentions the rumors that she was traveling with a man wearing a skull mask. Fate admits it was him, and Roxy is pleased she guessed correctly. Fate gets embarrassed from her staring, but she mentions how he reminds her of someone she knows. She thinks about him, hoping he is happy, and Fate calls the person she's thinking about lucky. However, his gluttony starts acting up, as one of his eyes turn red. He doesn't want Roxy to see him like this, so he runs away, and he senses that the Chimera is nearby. The Chimera emerges, but using his scythe, he attacks its core, while thinking about the way Roxy would look at him. He takes out the Chimera, but notices the same marking from the Salamanders, so Greed deduces Roxy is being targeted, and Fate knows it must be Eris' doing. Roxy catches up with him, and they end up finding the Duskstone he was looking for. They return to the city, and Roxy challenges Fate to a duel, as Mia tells him that he has been causing trouble in the city. But he explains that he was just defending himself, saying there are people that are after him. Roxy tells him that she can't overlook his actions, saying he should join her army, because nobody wants to mess with them. 
but he refuses to join them, so she prepares to fight him, telling him to draw his sword, but he leaves it in the scabbard, so she thinks he's underestimating her. She tells him that she won't hold back, and they start to fight, as he wonders why he can't overpower her, because his stats are supposed to be higher. He realizes that her technique is superior, and she manages to land a hit, leaving a crack on his mask. She threatens to expose him if he doesn't fight seriously, so he unleashes the power of his scabbard. Everyone recognizes it as a holy sword skill, as he explains that the scabbard is made from dusk stone, and it improves his holy sword techniques. He charges at her, managing to overpower her, but as he prepares to end the fight, he sees the amulet she's wearing, and he recognizes it, causing him to become distracted. Roxy disarms him, allowing her to secure victory, but she wonders why he let his guard down. He refuses to answer her question, and she recognizes his fighting style, asking him if he learned it from Aaron. She reveals that she encountered him during her journey, and he mentioned a traveler who has immense power, wondering if he was referring to fate, but he tells her to focus on her mission. He talks to Mugen, telling him that someone was controlling the Chimera, and Mugen knows that it was using a monster as its core. He explains that his family studied Galleon technology, saying Rain is a gifted scholar, and Fate knows that Chimeras are artificial creatures made in Galia, so he wants to meet her. Meanwhile, we see Rain in the lab, as her colleague tells her about Raphael, saying he is studying the Philosopher's Stone. So she decides to look into it, and we learn that it grants its wielder extraordinary powers, but it completely dominates his body. We return to Fate, as he recalls his conversation with Mine, where she told him about the Domain of E, saying he won't be able to defeat the Divine Dragon until he reaches it. He wonders how he's supposed to reach that level, but at that moment, everyone hears an alarm, as Alistair tells Roxy that the monsters are approaching the city. So she gathers her men, and they charge at the monsters, as Fate watches them from a distance, thinking she should be able to win the battle. But he sees a huge monster moving underground, and it's approaching her army, threatening to launch a surprise attack, so he decides to interfere. Greed transforms into a bow, and Fate uses his gluttony skill to strengthen the arrow, allowing him to launch a powerful shot at a distance. The arrow pierces through the ground, and it hits the monster, forcing it to come to the surface. He lunges at the monster, and he uses his identify skill, allowing him to see its stats. He realizes that it's extremely strong, and Roxy doesn't stand a chance against it. It summons an acid rain, so he defends using his shield, as Greed explains that it's using corrosion magic, advising Fate to be careful, because he will die if he touches it. So he decides to use his magic bow, and he fires a powerful arrow, causing an explosion, but the monster disappears, and it tries to escape. He realizes that it survived by splitting its body, and it's heading for Roxy, so he chases after it, but it uses smaller copies to attack him. He uses his Grand Cross skill, destroying them in an instant, as he realizes that it's not behaving like a normal monster, so he thinks it's being controlled. He jumps into the ground, trying to look for the monster's core, as he charges up, preparing to launch his most powerful arrow. The monster appears, and he is about to finish it off, but before his attack could land, he sees bullets hitting the monster. The arrow causes an explosion, and a voice tells him that he has consumed the monster's soul. But it's still alive, so he becomes confused, wondering how it can survive without its soul. He sees a masked man watching him, so fate lunges at him, as greed sees the weapon he's using, recognizing it as the mortal sin, envy. The monster surrounds fate, as greed explains that it was hit by a magic bullet, which activated its hidden power, allowing it to create copies of its soul. It attacks him, trying to melt his body, but he consumes the monster instead, revealing that he has found a way to counter its corrosion magic. He shoots the man, but a barrier protects him, as Greed explains that Fate's stats have reached the limit, saying he will need to reach the Domain of E to go any further. But he's still no match for the man, because he is already at that level. Fate charges in, and the man blocks his attack, pushing him away. The man uses Envy to fire magic bullets, and Fate tries to block it with his shield, but he still feels the force of the attack, causing him to cough up blood, as the man prepares to finish him off. He realizes that he needs to get stronger, and he bargains with his gluttony skill, saying he is willing to do whatever it takes to break his limit, so he begs gluttony to give him the power he needs. 
he reaches the domain of E, and he attacks the man, forcing him to retreat, as he summons monsters to attack fate. But he tells them not to interfere, and he's able to run right past. He continues to pursue the man, dodging his magic bullets, and creating a smokescreen to obscure his vision. Fate appears behind him, destroying his mask, and revealing his identity. We see that it's Alistair, but he isn't bothered by the setback, and he plays a flute, causing the divine dragon to appear. It makes its way to Roxy, so Fate rushes to get to her, but Alistair tries to stop him. Meanwhile, we see Roxy's army fighting the monsters, as the divine dragon appears. Mugen orders everyone to retreat, as it approaches Roxy, firing a powerful energy beam, which blows everyone away. But Fate protects her with his shield, and the force of the attack causes his mask to break, as he realizes that he can no longer hide his secret. Roxy is surprised to see him, and she is shocked as she looks at his eyes. He apologizes for lying to her, but tells her to retreat while he buys time. He goes to confront the dragon, using his Grand Cross skill, and he manages to hold it in a prison. Alistair shoots at him, and the two start fighting once again, but fate seems to struggle. Alistair notes that he's using too much power maintaining his skill, so he doesn't stand a chance. Fate fails to land a hit, and Alistair cuts off his arm. Alistair prepares to finish him off, but he suddenly gets stabbed from behind, as Fate reveals he used illusion magic, and he cuts Alistair down. His gluttony skill activates, and he suddenly finds himself surrounded by white. He sees the girl from Mind's memory again, and she introduces herself as Luna. She thanks him for killing her, but apologizes as the floor cracks, saying she can no longer hold on. Fate realizes that she was the one stopping his gluttony from going berserk, and she warns him that if he devours the divine dragon, he will lose himself. The floor crumbles, but Fate is caught by greed. Fate is shocked to see him, but greed tells him they need to leave. He thanks Luna for her warning, but resolves himself to defeat the dragon. They make it back outside, but the dragon breaks free from his skill. Greed wonders what he will do with only one arm, but fate suddenly throws him. Fate charges in, punching the dragon, and he proceeds to cut it up. As the dragon falls down, it fires an energy blast at him, but he boosts his stats using his overload skill, cutting through the blast and splitting the dragon in half. The dragon falls through the ground, and fate's gluttony devours the soul. He feels an intense pain, and he's about to go berserk, but he sacrifices all his stats to unlock Greed's final form, to prevent himself from causing damage. Mine appears, noting that he has let his skill consume him, and Fate asks her to finish him off. She prepares to keep their promise, but Roxy suddenly saves him. He tells her not to look at him, but she cries for him, saying she doesn't care what kind of power he has, and that she likes him for who he is, telling him not to die. He strangely feels his gluttony calming down, and Roxy tells him to go back with her. He's relieved she accepts him after learning the truth, and he collapses in her lap. When Fate wakes up, he finds himself back in the city. He's visited by Eris and Mine, who tell him he's been asleep for a whole week. Eris hands him greed, and Fate notes how dirty he is. Eris mentions how Mine forgot to bring greed back, but she notes she was busy dealing with envy, revealing it has the power to mind control, and that Alistair was being manipulated. Fate wonders what she did with Envy since it's indestructible, and Mine reveals she just threw it away. Eris notes that since the crowned human experiment using Roxy was a failure, they will need his help in the future, and Fate agrees on the condition she promises to leave Roxy alone. Eris tells him they should leave before Roxy gets back, saying it's dangerous for him to see her, because it seems just hearing her name makes his gluttony unstable. We see Roxy come to visit him, but he's already gone, and she finds a note from him. He explains everything about his skill to her, promising to return to her one day, and she thinks about how she always got courage from him. We see a flashback to when they first met. Fate is scared of her at first, thinking all holy knights are bullies, and she realizes how people see them. She's ashamed and apologizes to him, but his stomach growls, so she ends up giving him her food. He's glad he was able to meet a good holy knight, and she's able to be proud of herself. She wonders when they will meet again, and she promises to get stronger so she can protect him. We see Fate using Greed's new staff form, and he's able to restore his arm. 
Eris and mine go their separate ways, and fate sets off with greed to find a way to control his gluttony. But that's where this video ends. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.